this evening. Last Sunday evening, I had you to participate, and I'm going to ask you once again for this evening to participate in the service. I, um, as I was preparing this week, uh, I just um, felt like the Holy Spirit would have us to once again to continue some testimonies from people. Maybe you didn't um, uh, get to say anything last week and you would like to share something tonight. I, um, I want to share a couple of verses here uh, and then I'm going to ask those of you that have um, something you want to share about your testimony. Uh, <clears throat> the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 in the Beatitudes... In verse 6, blessed are those who hunger. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I want you to think about that word blessed means happy. Uh, I want you to think tonight about people that are hungering throughout the world. Um, what does it mean? Uh, on any day of your life that you can ever remember that you fell, felt maybe the weakest, you felt maybe the faintest, and there was this incredible hunger within you. There was this incredible thirst within you that if you only had a cool cup of water on a hot summer's day, how that it would refresh you and how it would give you great uh, enthusiasm to live life and to live it abundantly. Blessed are those, Jesus said, who hunger and thirst for righteousness. If there was ever a time, <clears throat> Keith and Sharon sang that a few weeks back. If there ever was a time that we need you, Lord, we need you now. If there ever was a time that Christians need to stand in the forefront of what is taking place in our culture and in our society as morals continue to decline. Uh, I, I think that we as Christians ought to stand and stand for Jesus. And that leads me to my next verse found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Peter <clears throat> said, but sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts. And then this phrase, and always... Be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Always be ready. Always be ready. The Bible is always speaking about being instant in season, out of season. Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope. That is in you. Let me ask you a question tonight. Do you have hope? Carla Flanagan sang a few weeks back, I have hope. I have hope when trouble comes my way. I have hope because of the incredible blessed hope that you and I are looking for. The glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ one of these days. Peter said, always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the question tonight is, if someone were to ask you, what is the hope that you have in your heart? In a very darkened world that needs so much light, what is the hope that you have? What testimony would you give to them? Anybody We've got several spotters there with microphones who would like to give a defense of your faith tonight, as Peter speaks about. Well, I'll start it off real quickly and then somebody else respond after me. I can remember vividly, I can remember March the 24th, 1963. I remember it as if it were yesterday. It was on a Sunday night, like we're gathered here. My little home church, Dr. Sam Scantlin, was preaching in the absence of my pastor that evening. And I can remember sitting on the second pew on the left hand, or the right hand side of the church. And the Holy Spirit of God moved within my heart, the hope of glory. And I remember that as 12 year old, 
I walked down the aisle and gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. I can't really even begin to imagine. I, I can't really conceive in my mind what it's like to not be with Jesus and to not have Jesus. Because all the days of my life were as long as I can remember. As long as I can remember, my heart, my passion was always for Jesus and his church. And that's why as a little bitty kid, even with parents that didn't attend church, that I walked across the street to the church because there was something that drew me there. And I love that old hymn when we sing, Draw me nearer, 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 precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Sharon sang that song a while ago. Sharon, it took me back to March the 24th, 1963. And I remember that as vividly as if it were yesterday as a 12-year-old. And because we didn't have a baptistry in our little church, we waited till we got a batch up to baptize. And I can remember on a Sunday afternoon, it was Mother's Day, the following May from March. that We came to the old Patterson Avenue Baptist Church in Comanche. And that afternoon... I remember when I'm um, singing the song, Oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. And there were several of us that were baptized on Mother's Day. Mother's Day is always so important to me. Easter is always so important to me because it's a reminder of the springtime of life and the resurrection of life. Let me tell you, when you trust Jesus early in the springtime of your life, in the infancy of your life, let me tell you, it's hard to know what it would be like without Jesus. But this one thing I know, Jesus is always with me wherever I go. If somebody were to ask you, what is the hope within you? What would you tell them tonight? Somebody, we ought to pop up like popcorn. Yes, right over there, Artie. Just be like popcorn. Jump up. Pop up. Well, now I'm past the age of jumping up, but I'll stand up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that my hope comes from the faith that I have in God's Word. When I study His Word, even in the times of my deepest sorrow, after I lost my mother and despair, even though my hope was very small for that day, when I began to read his word and draw on his word of power and the strength that he was giving me through that time, my hope became deeper and stronger than it's ever been. So I think it's in that faith and that trust that we have in the living God and that he is so real that if you will call on him and ask him to help you, he will. He will be right there. And I, I just so grateful for his word and the love that I have for him as Sharon saying, I could not help but how beautiful that song is and how real it is to me. Absolutely. Thank you, Artie. To love him in the same old-fashioned way as you did the day you received Christ. Who else would like to give a testimony of the hope that's within you? Doesn't have to be anything lengthy or anything, but just, just go ahead, Kara. So most of you know Paisley, when she was born, had that cleft lip, right? I was in a really bad spot. I felt like a bad mom, like it was my fault. And I went through the Bible. And I have a couple of verses here. One that helped me is John 9, 3. It's not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered, this happened to the this happened so the power of God can be seen in him. So my hope is that he's going to heal my children and I can come to him with any problem or any trial. And also in Romans 5, 2 through 5, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, 
because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And those two verses alone got me through a really hard place. And you look at her now, she's beautiful. And it's because God helped heal her. Amen. Thank you, Kara, the hope of glory, the blessed, glorious hope. Somebody else that would like to give a quick testimony, Hester, right down here. Uh, Hester, let me say this as Wesley's coming to bring her the mic. <clears throat> I've watched Hester for many, 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 many years. And Hester has had an incredible, deep, abiding faith. And being in her 90s tonight, listen to I, what she said. I don't saying. mind saying I'm 91 years old. Thank my Lord and Master for giving me every day of it. And I've gotten so that in the morning when I have breakfast, I add another thank you to my list. We don't really think about how many people it takes to raise chickens and eggs and flour and biscuits and stuff. And I thank God for the people that provide my food every day because I would have starved to death a long time ago. Now I want to tell you about a miracle that was that he put on me. Uh, on October the 30th, eight years ago, I had a stomach problem. I had diverticulitis. And I told my Dr. Whedon that I needed a colon scope. And I came for that, that day. Then I woke up to be told that he couldn't finish it. He found a blockage. We better go in the morning and find out what that blockage is. Next day I woke up. I was in ICU. Well, he had taken out, I don't know how much of my colon, because there was a cancer in my colon next to a diverticulitis. So if y'all have diverticulitis or losis or whatever, be cautious, it could happen any day. But I was in that hospital for three weeks. I never had a pain. They didn't give me any pain medicine because it didn't hurt. I couldn't figure that out. And I thought, well, it must be God sparing me of pain. Undoubtedly, he did. I believe it with all my heart, I do. But I went up the, they moved me up on the third floor. And that lady asked me, what was my pain level? I said, I don't have any pain. I said, in fact, I haven't had a pain since the day he operated on me. And that woman was dumbstruck. She said, don't tell that up here. Nobody will believe you. I said, well, and I asked Dr. Whedon after that on a follow-up visit. And he said, the only time they can control pain is the first three days when they put one of those things on you, on your back. And I see you. I said, well, he, he said, beyond that, I don't have a reason or answer. I said, I've got one answer. He did it. Undoubtedly, that was a miracle that my Lord put upon me. Nobody will convince me it wasn't. Amen. And I still thank him. He's with me. Absolutely. Thank you, Hester. All right, somebody else. A long time ago in 1962, there was a revival going on in Ada, Oklahoma. And it was put on by the John Hagee revival, not Hagee, Haggai revival. And it had already been on for about four weeks. And uh, I was a counselor at that from our church there in Ada. And uh, I wasn't a Christian. And I, it, people would probably wonder why. People at my church wondered why uh, that I went forward. And I had been a pretender for quite a long time at being a Christian. And uh, I was saved. I took the uh, medallion deal that showed that I was a counselor and slipped it into my pocket and went home that night. And um, uh, I couldn't sleep. It just kept bearing on my mind that uh, I, I knew that if I died that night, I'd go to hell, period, as a 18-year-old uh, kid going to college and uh, 
and all, um, it was bothering me so bad, and all of a sudden, there was such a rumbling and a bad noise during the night, and I thought, what in the world is that? And uh, it seemed like it was getting louder and louder, and it was coming, it woke my mom and dad up, it really woke me up because it was my corner of the room. And there was a railroad track behind our house on our property and the train had derailed and came into our backyard right up to my bedroom practically door. And uh, I, um, I made a commitment that night to that the next time that I went to the a revival, I was going to ask God to come into my heart. And I, it happened that night. Everything Amen. was not uh, in my life uh, rosy or anything after that. I was preparing to go into the Air Force and become a cartographer. And um, I had an accident out in my front yard with a power lawnmower. And it cut off all the toes on my right foot. And um, that ended my career with the Air Force because they wouldn't take me. Uh, and uh, I thought, what in the world am I going to do? And as Randy knows, I became a teacher. And uh, I taught uh, in this county for nearly 30 years. And uh, it, uh, God has been really gracious and good to me and having two children that have been saved and one that comes to church here, John Byers. And we've had a, uh, a, a wonderful life being able to know that any time that I wanna call on, on God to, to help me, I talk to him almost all the time. And uh, just lately, uh, back in January, I started doing something that I thought, well, maybe this is a, te a testimony that I could do, and I started doing Thought for the Day. And I don't know if very many of you know that uh, site that's on Facebook, but I have uh, now uh, between 4,000 and 10,000 people that watch it uh, all over the world now. And uh, it's... Uh, it's quite interesting about what people say sometimes in their comments about what these thoughts are. Not all of them are my thoughts. Some of them are Billy Graham's, Ann Lott's, uh, just different ones that I come across on their devotionals that seem really to stick out in my mind that I, I want to share. But uh, God's been good. Amen. He has been good. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny Byers, uh, John Byers, one of our policemen here at the church, his father there. Thank you for that, Johnny. Somebody else want to share right here? All right. <clears throat> I would just like to profess my strength knowing that I will see my children again. That's all. Absolutely, Sherry. God bless you. She knows what it's like to suffer grief and loss. How many of your family members, Sherry, her three children? God bless you. Somebody else. I'm thankful for parents that taught me to serve God. I'm thankful for this church and all the special people that touch my heart. I'm thankful that Jesus saved me and put the Holy Spirit in my heart and that we have his word to guide us. And I'm thankful for the freedom to be here. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Brother God bless Andy, you, Gayla. <clears throat> I'm thankful for the hope that I have to be in glory with the Lord someday. He has brought me through so many things and our family too and I hope for the future of my little Tristan as he faces some more future surgeries to correct some things and by the grace of God he has given him so many blessings and he has healed him he has given him some other burdens to bear but by his grace and the hope in the Lord I know that he will strengthen him and uphold him 
And there's a possibility that possibly Tristan may be able to play uh, baseball again in the near future. That was a passion he had before. But the hope that I have is that I will see my Lord in heaven. And I am so thankful for everything he's done for me. People have been asking me, how are you doing from the trials that I faced within the last year? And I, my answer to them, when they say, how are you? I've been saying, trying to say, I'm, be I'm better than yesterday, but not as good as tomorrow. Because my faith and love and my strength is in the Lord. And without the faith and the love that I have from him, I would not be blessed as I am. All and right. I praise you for your messages. Thank you, Gayla. God bless you. All right, somebody else. We've got time for a couple more. Somebody right here, Kelly. <clears throat> Number one, I would like to thank everyone here at this church for being a part of my family. I love this church family. I feel like you can call anyone or they know they can call me. I've had many a calls and I have even called others and we've prayed together. I've had people come to my house and we pray and I just want to thank everybody here for the, all the prayers that y'all have prayed for my children in the past. But I also want to thank God because I know that all of my children are Christians. My grandchildren are Christians. And I just pray that they continue their lives with God. I know a lot of people backslide, but I pray that they always know that God is their number one. And because I know he is mine, and he's the first one I talk to in the mornings, and he's always the last. So I just want to thank you all here for being such a wonderful church family also. All right. Thank you, Kelly. <clears throat> Someone else. I'm going to ask Sharon if she will come back and sing that song. This will be our closing song. And as she comes and gets ready to sing, I love you, Lord, in the same old-fashioned way. Anyone else? We've got time for one more as, as Sharon's coming. I want to say how much I appreciate those of you that have participated these past two Sunday nights because I've had several people to say how much it meant to them to be encouraged by others in the congregation who was willing to share their faith in Christ. Anyone else? Somebody mentioned. Yes, Artie. As I listened to all the wonderful testimonies tonight and thought how, how great it is to be in a wonderful Christian church. And I looked over at Bobby and, and Bill High and thought about when we were growing up as children and were raised in Christian homes. But I'm a mentor at the schools, and there are children there that don't even know who he is. And that bothers me. And I'm not allowed to tell them. And that bothers me more. But the ministry of One True Light is really a wonderful ministry. And if you feel called to do that, to talk to these children and help them, so many of them, their parents are incarcerated and being raised by grandmothers, which there's nothing wrong with that. I was raised by a grandmother. They're wonderful. But my mother was not incarcerated. She was a widow at 21 because my father was killed in the war. But these precious children need that one true light. And we are that message of hope as we were talking about a while ago. I have 30 of them in one class and a lot of them don't know who he is. And I pray when I go in that his light will shine through me. And they are so drawn to that that they run to me when I come in. But they don't know why, but I do. Absolutely. And they're drawn to that light. But there's a lot of precious children out there that we really need to reach and pray for. Here in our community, absolutely. Thank you, Artie. God bless you. Sharon, come and sing that song again. And this is going to be our benediction for tonight. And I hope you will listen to the words of this song.
I know 